Oh, okay. Maybe we should okay. start. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming and spending your afternoon or morning or night. Uh, I'm not sure what time is it, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for uh, spending the time with us. Uh, welcome to our second live stream in this Make It The Microbit Galaxy series. So the first one happened two weeks ago and it was about adding lights to your uh, microbit projects. So if you have not watched it, you can head over to Think Academy Facebook after this live, okay, after this live um, and watch the safe live. Um, so take note, the handle name is Think Academy. That is Tinker followed by Academy. So the, the name is also on the screen now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, if you have any questions throughout this live, please feel free to comment them down in the chat box, okay? Uh, it can be anything and everything. It doesn't have to be microbit related, okay? It can be about what we had for lunch or about two of us even. Uh, yeah, so um, keep the chat alive. <laughs> All right, so um, a little bit um, of a background about our company. Um, the parent company oh, is Tinker. Yeah. And uh, maybe just to say that uh, I'm Tracy uh, and that's Hetty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I forgot to introduce yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm too excited to <laughs> see. <laughs> yes. Um, so for me, I'm a programmer in Tinker Tanker. I also manage um, our social media accounts. Let's get hacking. Uh, how about Tracy? Uh, I'm uh, in the teaching uh, side of things, so go out to schools or corporations and uh, or over online now uh, and, and teach stuff. Uh, but uh, truth be told, uh, we all also kind of wear many hats, so we all kind of uh, help out each other as well. So we're a pretty uh, uh, versatile company like that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, the company itself is called Tinker Tanker, and the education arm is Tinker Academy. So as what Tracy has mentioned, we go down to schools and even organizations um, to teach coding, electronics and stuff, okay? Uh, we deliver a variety of curriculums like uh, Microbit, Python, iOS, Android, and Unity and many more. Okay, if you'd like to uh, read more about us, our website is thinkacademy.com. The link is on the screen. Uh, you can take a picture, take a screenshot, and you can take a look later. Okay, um, okay next. See, I have this next whiteboard so that Tracy, Tracy is <laughs> handling the uh, PowerPoint slide. I'm now. switching, so this yeah. Is yes, this is my cue to uh, for him to move on to the next slide. Okay, so the book. Um, I would say the microbit was, has been the most requested curriculum that we get from schools, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we have uh, been teaching microbit for a couple of years now and Last year, no. In fact, um, two years ago, uh, we decided to compile all our knowledge, the things that we discover uh, through teaching and the common questions that our students have to, and compile them into a book. Yeah, so uh, the book is awesome. I know it's very biased here, but I really, really highly recommend this book because it's um, really comprehensive, okay? If you're a beginner, not to worry. We do cover the basics in the book. Uh, if you're an advanced user, you can also use this book. Um, there are a couple of projects that are more suitable for advanced users, microbit users. Um, like, for example, we uh, there's a project about sending data to things, things speak cloud. Yeah. And next, where can you get this book? Oh, sorry. Um, there's a get hacking slide somewhere. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, where can you get this book? You can get this book at gethacking.com. So um, gethacking.com is our online store. We sell uh, STEM-related products like single, like octopus parts for your microbit or even ready-made STEM toys like um, Ozoma. Yeah, there's, there's a variety of uh, products for young kids to for primary school or even like um and older yeah uh shall we go on oh, yeah. yes yes then <laughs> when you have all these products right you bought all these components uh you don't know what to do with it okay you, you have tried the basic stuff uh and you want to do more stuff you want to stretch your dollars right uh what to do you can head over to our tutorial site let's get hacking.com uh that is uh, let's let's dot get hacking dot com for inspiration. 
yeah, uh, there are tons of microbit tutorials and we do add them on a regular basis and we are planning to add more than just microbit like Arduino, you know, like um, make juice and that kind of stuff. So uh, do keep a lookout. Um, also, this is a self-promotion. Uh, I manage Let's Get Hacking social media account. Uh, so if, if, it, uh, if you really um, like what we do and you support our course, um, do give us a follow at our Instagram and other social media platform. Yeah, um, the handle is Let's Get Hacking. Also follow Tinker Academy, okay? Um, if you have any questions, uh, even after this live ends, uh, you can always slide into our DM. Um, Okay, it has been a long, 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 long introduction. TLDR, three keywords, okay? Take Academy, get hacking, and let's get hacking. It's the same handle for all our social media platforms and even our website. So uh, you know where to find us. Uh, our DMs are very, very open. Uh, we are on social media all the time. Um, so yeah, we would love to talk to you guys. Um, okay, um, okay, next. All right. Um, back to what we are supposed to do which is to uh teach uh oh something dropped okay uh, which is to teach uh, sorry something dropped um so for today the lesson of the objective of this life is to uh work with different types um by the end of this life you should be able to work with different types of uh, servos you can should be able to know how to add extensions uh, to add additional functionality in make code and also create a zoetrope so um so this project is, this life is all about um zoetrope okay if you don't know what a zoetrope is uh it's basically like a old school animation animation um device yeah yeah, yeah so, it, it, it's it's uh, like how, how you would see, uh, this is how animation uh, works, right? It's a, it's a sense of vision. So um, the zoetrope was like the earliest form of, 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 uh, of TV, of, of uh, uh, showing moving pictures and all that. Yeah, so yeah. this little project uh, highlights the, the use of, uh, of continuous servo uh, to make this uh, movement. Yes, okay, let me stop that, okay. All right, okay, and next, next. Yes. yes, um, okay, uh, and what are the um concepts that we covered today is writing uh signals to a pin on micro bits as well as event handlers. Um, next. Okay, um, we are not sure if anyone wants us wants to see us making it. Uh, so for this live, we are just going to focus on coding. Um, the instructions are actually in the book and even on that get hacking, you can search Zoe Trope. Uh, you can just um, read from there. Yeah. Um, or if you would like us to create a video, uh, a YouTube video, you can request, make a request. Uh, we accept requests as well. Okay, so for this project, uh, the supplies are okay, if you have uh if you have a micro bit and breakout board and a continu continuous servo now you can follow along this live afterwards you can build the, the 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 project okay but um on the whole this this project uses micro bit breakout board continuous servo uh you need a laptop as well to code on make code um you need black construction paper for the zoe trope uh, as well as the printout, the animation strip, um, tape to tape them together, and um, some kind of base. I use a, a takeaway lid for this. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that's so, uh, basically <laughs> the problem statement. So, maybe you should just yeah. keep on to. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like any other problems in the world, right, you need to break down into yeah. smaller parts. Okay, in this case, a zoetrope has only, uh, has three parts. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to include the last part. Okay, but the first part is when I press button A, okay, let me, when I press button A, the zoetrope spins one way, and when I press button B, spins the other way, uh, as well as when, I mean, I need a way to stop the zoetrope, right? 
So when I press button A plus B at the same time, stop the zoetrope. So this is the three main, uh, the three steps in making a zoetrope. Okay. Uh, yeah. Next. Yeah. And I, I think basically uh, what we just want to say is that this whole problem, uh, breaking down the problem, um, is just, you know, what are the, the steps the individual steps you need to do that happens at each time. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, you can have a complicated thing that you want to happen, but just break it down uh, and, and what exactly you want to happen. Uh, in this case, you know, if you press a button, do you want what exactly you want it to do? It's quite simple for this case. Uh, so that's why we're just showing you this particular project. Yeah. All right. So how do we attach a continuous servo? Um, unlike any other micro bit, uh, octopus parts, right? So octopus parts has um, yellow, red, and black wires. But for servos, uh, the, the color is a little bit different. Okay, let me center it, okay? The, the wire color is brown, red, and orange. So how, but, uh, so how do you know which uh, which way to plug into, right? Um, a rule of thumb is that the darkest wire, uh, the, the darker, darkest wire is the ground pin. Uh, red is the voltage pin and orange is the signal, uh, yeah, signal pin. So um, what you do is that you just find the black pin, okay? Just find the um, ground pin and spin it like, plug it in okay in this project we plug into pin one pin one is the second pin from the left um there's a small tiny word on it a uh, tiny printing on it so yeah find pin one and plug the servo on it okay yeah. and I, I think yeah it, it i think it's good to uh, uh just since uh, we jumped into all of this if i don't know if any of you are not may not be familiar exactly about breakout boards and such. Um, we're dealing with uh, a particular breakout board that we have called the Think Academy breakout board. And there are other breakout boards as well. Um, in, in this case, our breakout board you can see it has been colored, the pins are colored. Uh, and that's why we know uh, we just need to match the, the color of the pins uh, uh, with the wire pin. Uh, although that being said, as we are showing you that the servo uh, the, the, is a slightly different color because it's a brown instead of a black color for the brown. Um, but uh, as long as you understand uh, those, uh, those small little uh, changes, uh, the, the whole concept is that you're just connecting uh, the, the, the pins correctly to the wires that you want. So uh, for, uh, it's either gonna be a black wire for ground or a brown wire in the case of the servo uh, and the corresponding one for the, uh, the signal would be uh, orange or uh, in, for the servo and then yellow for uh, other kinds of parts. Uh, red is always going to be uh, red normally, I mean, as convention. Uh, so it, it's pretty much uh, uh, a standard like, uh, like that. Yeah. And if you have other breakout boards, yes, you go ahead and you can connect it to the, uh, the servo. You just need to be aware. Uh, maybe those boards are not colored, so, but they would normally have markings to show you, you know, where uh, the ground is indicated by a G or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Move on to the next slide here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, okay, so right now, uh, we are going to do some coding. Uh, mm -hmm. Take note, the URL is makecode.microbit.org. Okay. Uh, Tracy, yeah. could you... So let's go on to the... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, you can create a new project. Um, yeah, so in, in my case, uh, I, I do have another project here. So, uh, you know, you may have a, a, a blank screen. I mean, uh, uh, over here, may, which is the my project, may all be blank. Uh, but as you make projects, it fills up there. Uh, these projects get filled into the, um, uh, on your cache of your computer. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's just do another name. Okay, so when you first start a project, there will be two default blocks that is on start and forever. Uh, I'm not going to cover that today because we are not going to use that. So uh, we should delete this block. And to delete this block, you can either right click and click on delete, select delete. 
or you can drag and drag it to the uh, code drawer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so does anyone, I feel like I'm teaching a class here. Does anyone remember what are the three steps to this project? <laughs> you can just comment, comment in the comment box. Okay, let's pretend people just have commented. So the three steps are, we are going to, uh, when button A is clicked, we will spin one way. When button B is clicked, uh, it's pressed, sorry, not click. Pressed, uh, spin the other way. And when button A plus B is pressed, uh, stop the turbo. Okay, so all these events, right, all these button presses are called event handlers. Okay, so event handlers is uh, basically like um, an event that will be triggered when a certain physical input conditions have been met. For, uh, for instance, when you press the button or when you shake the micro bit or when you tilt the micro bit and that kind of stuff. Okay, so when you, uh, by putting blocks in the appropriate, appropriate event handler, you can have the micro bit to perform certain uh, events every time an event is triggered. Um, actually, you can go back to Miko. Yeah. So, um, where can I find on button A press? It's under input. Okay. Uh, the first one on button A press. And, okay, I forgot to tell you. Um, there are two ways that you can code um, this uh, servo. The first way is to use an existing servo block by uh, provided by MakeCode itself. So it's inside the pin, uh, pin drawer. So to find the pin drawer, you have to click on advance, uh, select pins, and I have to scroll down, uh, servo right pin to, yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to change the pin number. And this is slightly difficult because you have to know um, the, the numbers to uh, in the in the empty space. So zero means it turns one way, 180 turns the other way. And how do you know which number to use, right? You can use a uh, help function. So you, uh, over here is a slider. You can change the, 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 the angles. But if you want to continuously spin one way or the other, you have to choose either 0 or 100 KB. Um, and I would like Tracy to show the help uh, section. So to, to find out more about this blog, you can right click, click on help, and there will be like some kind of documentation um, that will appear on the site. We just have to wait for it. Wait a bit. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so if you read, uh, if you read on, right, it will, uh, it will say that zero is to turn one way, 180, the other way. Okay, yeah, so this is the first way. Um, okay, uh, Tracy, could you delete the servo right oh, yeah. block? All right, another intuitive way is to use an extension uh, package um, to add um, to add an extent, an extra, to add an extension, extension. package. Yeah. Yes, uh, there are a couple of ways. The typical way is to click on advance, then scroll down to um, extensions. Um, extension. Yep. And then you have to search for continuous servo. Yeah, and you can just type in continuous as well. Uh, yes. You should still find it. Uh, <clears throat> there, there may be more than one selection, and uh, in this case, I think we want this one, continuous servo. And another tip, oh, I wouldn't say tip, another... Um, Just another way of another way, Yeah, <laughs> another way of finding extension is to click on the gear icon on top right, and... There's an extension drop down yeah. list. Yeah, just yeah. goes to the I same mean, place. Yeah. yeah, whichever you prefer is the same thing. Okay, yeah. So uh, whenever you add an extension 
uh, package, right, a new drawer will appear. So in this case, we added continuous server and the, a new drawer had appeared. Uh, click on it. So we want to spin uh, one way, okay? Click, the, click on the first one, yes. Make sure you change to the correct pin. Okay, the nice thing about uh, make code is that it does tell you which pins you can use, which pins you can't use. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. yeah uh, what I like about this package is that uh, it's really intuitive. It's either you spin one way or the other way. Okay. So uh, we want to add a second block, a second event handler, which is on button B trends. Um, uh, a shortcut is that you can just copy and paste from the existing. Yep. So, so we right want to right click to on the actually on this one because sometimes some people may right click on on here, uh, but you can kind of see that the highlight shows you exactly what you are selecting. But if I click on on button A press, uh, everything, uh, including the blocks inside the event handler, is selected. So in this case, I'm able to duplicate. Uh, the whole but, uh, part here. Um, and if you notice that um, you've got a uh, grayed out uh, or uh, a situation here, uh, this code is uh, not active. It's actually, there's a little help uh, tooltip here that says the block is disabled. Uh, and that's because um, make code is uh, smart enough to know that, um, well, there's, there's a problem. So it's, give, this is, it's throwing up an error basically uh, because uh, if you have two blocks here that say on button A press, uh, which code would you run? The, the code that you're going to run in here or the code that's going to run in here, uh, assuming that the code inside here is different. Um, so once I go ahead and make the change because uh, we're supposed to be using button B press, uh, the code is active again. Yeah. So just a tip, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, if you have those grayed out areas, uh, you know that something is wrong and oftentimes it's like this kind of conflict happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So right now we need to change the inner block, right? So delete the block and uh, go to continuous servo and select spin, spin other way. Yes. Uh, don't forget to change to pin one. And the last event handler is on button A plus B press. So do the same thing again. Um, duplicate the outer block and change to A plus B. Uh, yes. Yeah. Then you have to uh, delete the inner block and turn off the motor. Okay. Uh, once you're done, you can click on download and it will come like this okay, let me see i'm not sure if you can see the animation yeah okay let me try okay, show, this, yeah. okay this is on a press this is b press and stop it yeah although the, the on b press didn't really look like anything happened it just kept on moving <laughs> maybe it's, it's too fast. <laughs> oh yeah. Or maybe we probably. maybe we could see like from the bottom, uh, like like from like see it moving from the bottom now since we've seen it okay. uh, from the top end. Uh, right. no, like 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 uh, from from its bottom, like looking up the bottom. Oh yeah. Like this. Okay, let me try. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. This is yeah, that's uh, spinning one way, and the other way, yeah. and stop. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, the coding uh, uh, is really simple. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess we can move on to the next section where Tracy yeah. will talk more about like motors and the, the different types of motors. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's go back to our slides here. Um, there was actually one, oh yeah, no, actually there was one more thing that I wanted to just mention that um, um, in line with uh, uh, packages, right, extension packages, um, there was actually another one uh, where you can see, in fact, 
in, you know, you don't even have to search for it. Um, there's this one called Servo, uh, which was actually kind of like a default that they had created uh, the, the make code people. Um, and uh, this is another package uh, that shows you, uh, it's just another way of using the servos. Um, and you can see that um, they, they have positional and they have conditional, uh, continuous. Uh, and the way that they, they write the, uh, the, the blocks for this, uh, you know, the language is a bit different. Um, you know, you have to set a tangle or you have to tell it how much percent of speed you're running and things like that. Uh, but you, that's another way of controlling your servos. Um, you know, uh, so uh, this is obviously the easier way that if you use pins, you know, it's, it's going to be, um, there's, you know, it, it's more manual uh, in that sense. Um, but this also brings up a good point about the fact that what we're talking about for this case, uh, about the uh, using the continuous servo, uh, is actually a type of uh, 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 servo. Uh, and, and a servo actually is also part of this larger group of things called motos. And actually that's our whole, um, uh, you know, theme for, for this, uh, this, this, this uh, show. Um, we're actually looking at different types of motos. Um, and um, a continuous servo is just a particular type of a motor that will actually move at uh, to certain positions. Um, uh, so, uh, I wanted to just show you um, about um, uh, some things about, uh, like if you wanted to research more, find out more about motors and stuff like that, um, you know, there's all these resources available. Um, you know, Spark Fund is, is pretty uh, interesting. They've got lots of uh, tutorials and stuff like that. Um, so um, if we look at this uh, thing about the, uh, the hobby servo, um, uh, they're telling you about what servo motors are. They're basically, uh, really easy ways of adding motion, right? Uh, creating motion uh, uh, in your projects, um, and they typically come in this kind of like uh, this little package here. Um, the cool thing is um, they come in different sizes, right? They're different. Uh, 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 in other words, yeah, they have different capacities of 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 uh, how much uh, weight that they can, how much uh, load they can carry. Uh, so in other words, you know, they, they may be more powerful to to raise uh, uh, heavier things. Um, a lot of times we're using these blue ones, uh, which is good enough to to uh, get some projects going. Um, and especially if you're making things with cardboard and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, that's what you typically use. But if you need more, more power, you know, more more capability and stuff, you go for like bigger uh, servos and stuff. Um, and um, you can see that uh, the servo uh, wires, as we were showing you just now, um, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, you just need to refer to, to tables like this to figure out, okay, uh, what exactly the, the pins do, and then just make sure that you uh, connect the wires to the pins correctly. Um, this is cool. Um, you can see that actually inside the servo uh, is a moto right over here, right? So, uh, uh, it, when we are dealing with um, uh, servo, okay, just the name it servo, um, normally it means that it has this, it's in its package, and there are gears, uh, as well as a, a small uh, control board, yeah, that allows it to be able to um, move at certain positions, right, from zero to 180 uh, degrees. Uh, and that's why you can make it like, a, if you imagine a, a car park gantry going up, and going down, right? You got going from one position to another position, all right? Um, so that's what they are, these little packages, and they have all the electronics and the gears and all that, so that they're able to provide all that for you. And all you need to do in our case with make code is just get the right uh, um, uh, uh, pins, uh, uh, code pins to, to execute what you want it to do. Um, now, the thing is, um, servos, uh, uh, move from one position to another, and because they're you know small little packages and they're quite popular and all that, uh, the manufacturers actually were able to figure out, uh, oh, they just need to do something to it, and they could actually make it move around continuously, like an actual motor, like move it round and round and round. So um, that's why you have such a thing as a continuous servo, uh, which is what the Zotrope project is using, the continuous servo. 
So even though uh, we use the same word servo, uh, you know, it's not exactly the same meaning. It doesn't mean from one position to the other. So um, uh, these servos, have, the continuous servos, typically they have this little uh, pin here or this little uh, uh, trim port here where you can control um, the calibration, right? Where exactly is, is uh, uh, the, the midpoint and, uh, and uh, continuous servo? Uh, uh, really? And, that's really. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's, yeah. The thing is that these servos, right? They they look um identical. Like yeah. Yeah. No, right? I've been. Yeah. Like every time I want to like uh, adjust the midpoint, I would just take the, yeah. the this thing out and like yeah. adjust it accordingly to my project. But today I learned that yeah. continuous servos. Yeah. Have so you can kind of like just adjust. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the screw. I mean, like I, um, I know am I showing this right? <laughs> I can't <laughs> even see my screw. Yeah. So oh. it's slightly different, yeah. So the 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 positional servo doesn't have this. Yeah, so a uh, a positional servo wouldn't have this 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 like this trim pot where you can actually um um uh yeah. Ten, uh, ten. Tune it. Calibrate basically. Oh. Yeah, tune it. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh, so that it, you know you're positioning it correctly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I mean, our, our bulk of our projects, uh, you know, uh, that's all you need. Um, but uh, when we uh go beyond using servos and uh, uh, continuous servos, um, we can understand that there are other kinds of um uh. And other kinds of motors, basically, because servos is basically you know the form of the motor, right? Um, and when we talk about motors, I mean they can be big, huge things. I mean they're they're they're, they're you know for your fridge, they're for your car, um, you know car engines have motors inside them and stuff. So you, and, you know, I mean like inside your fridge, you, you know you've got you got the the engine run. I mean the the motor running oh, so that it it cools the the whole system. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, there's uh, basically there's three very broad categories. You have DC motors, which that DC motor was inside the, uh, the, or the very small DC motor was inside the, the, um, uh, continuous servo, you know, and the servo as well. Um, and you have stepper motors and you have uh, linear motors as well. Uh, well, the linear motor and stepper motor are basically um, doing the same kind of thing, but one is like a better version. Yeah. So, um, just wanted to show you that uh, if you look at this particular tutorial, I just want to skip ahead to um, okay, show you that, yeah, you have your DC motors are basically like what we call brush motors. Yeah, I mean, they have, uh, you know, they have a, a a way of when the way they work is they basically have an electromagnetic magnetic current that flows and it causes uh inside here to move around and there's a point of contact here where there are these brushes and um this is where you know uh the part is this is where you know it can, it can be wear and tear for example uh, so uh, because you have um uh, these brushes here um you know you have some problems that right? this can wear after over time you can generate all this heat because of the the um, the uh, um, friction okay, that's involved, uh, as well as noise and stuff. So you know, obviously advances, you know, improvements made, and they can uh, create brushless motors so that uh, you know they kind of like overcome <clears throat> all your all your negative points about it, and uh, they just mean that you know they are able to move. In a different way, you know, in a in a, in a different manner, without needing to use the uh more, um, um those brushes to contact, and therefore, um, you know, not having those other problems. Yeah, but of course, you also have other problems here, whereby uh, maybe you need to have more specialized controllers. Um, you have to require low starting loads, like you know, you can't move uh, a very heavy uh thing uh from the get go. Um. And basically, you know, it, it, it may not be as as, as easy uh, to use, uh, or maybe more expensive because it's yeah, it needs more specialized components and stuff. Um, 
So moving away from these kind of DC motors, you also have um, stepper motors. And uh, the idea with stepper motors is just like your positional um, servo, you also have um, uh, you you also have a way of using a motor not to move around continuously, like to move a wheel around and around, but you uh, want to uh, move it to certain uh, spot position. Uh, and if, if you need to move very heavy loads, right, that's where you have your stepper motors because they can actually move things um, precisely uh, and 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 things that are very uh, require a lot of load. Then okay, they have the power to do so. Um, and and therefore, you know, you've got huge big machines, you know, that can use uh, stepper motors um, or linear motors, which is basically an uh, improvement over your stepper motors. Um, so the whole idea is, yeah, you've got motors that can move round and round, spinning, spinning, spinning. You've got motors that can move precisely, you know, to different positions. So these are your major, you know, how, how you would uh, categorize them as steppers or uh, or, or, or just uh, motors, or in terms of servos, you know, a variation of, of these things whereby they move continuously around and around or, or not continuously. Yeah. Um, so it's great finding out about all these things about motors. Um, you know, maybe you've not been, uh, you, you may or may not have been interested in physics or, or math and stuff like that, or uh, maybe, you know, you just didn't do much of that and, and, and don't. You, you may see all these theory things and it may be looking daunting to you, but maybe you are starting to make, you know, these projects yourself and all that. Uh, it's not too late to learn, it, you know, to find out more about these things. It's quite interesting. And a lot of these websites, you know, make it uh, easy to understand and, and break down the, the, the math or the, or the physics behind all these things. Um, uh, but that's the joy of making, I guess. Uh, you know, you start to learn more about, about all these components and stuff like that. Uh, it's like self-learning as well, self-discovery. Or you could also pick up a book, like you know, our uh, our book, and and where we go through these things and 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 try to um, give you these projects that help you, you know, see, oh, you know, this is how you do this and that. Um, mm -hmm. And we also provide links, you know, in our book, and yeah. you can always email us and stuff like that if you want to find out more. Um, there's a lot. I say that there's a lot of stuff out there, research that you can do, but problem also is knowing how to find it or finding the right things that make sense to you mm -hmm. so um sometimes it's also uh nice to have a guiding hand and, and things yeah. like that or at least uh be aware mm -hmm. that oh maybe you need to be set down on this particular part of like this particular website provides you know uh, easier information to digest and, and uh, you can go on from there yeah um can I add? Um, I think it also helps if you know what to uh, search for. So most um, components, right, they have the the serial number, the component number uh, oh, yeah, on it. Right. Yeah, so you can just right. search for like L2 L2911, you know, or that, right. that, that there'll be something on the right. on the item itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. you're for searching it, for like a, yeah. a, a number. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. In in this case, these are the stepper motors, and we have the stepper motor in our projects as well. Uh, but yeah, this is there's a two eight B Y J forty eight. Yeah, so there are these particular numbers that that are crucial to knowing which kind of thing they are because it's not, you know, it, it it's it's a, a stepper motor just means like the type of thing. It doesn't mean the exact particular one that you may be wanting to use in a project because they have different requirements or different capabilities and stuff like that yeah so uh, it, it can be a lot because yeah there are a lot of sea of numbers or serial numbers and stuff like that but um you know um, at least for for us the way we've been going about this uh, here are the common things that people use you know uh, mm -hmm. go for this servo model uh, you know try this this kind of uh, step model we can find out more about that um there um the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, show you is that um, oftentimes, you know, you may want to find out what am I going to be able to do uh, or, uh, you know, maybe you have some idea, but you know, you're not fully confident and you, you will want to see, you know, uh, get ideas, inspiration, uh, or maybe you see in, like this picture here, you see this project and uh, it's not using, you don't have that particular breakout board or you don't have Lego or you don't have this, you don't have that. But actually, um, 
you know, you don't have to do it exactly like this. You can figure out your own way of using cardboard to prototype the structures that you need. Um, the key thing is that we need to understand that, yeah, when we have a, uh, in this case, when we have a micro bit and we have uh, our version of our breakout board and uh, our components that we're using to connect that breakout board, uh, you can create uh, uh, something like this. Um, this bubble blower, uh, I'm just going to play this without sound. Um, basically, that uh, there is this cup of water here uh, with a soap solution, um, and there is a fan over here, and there's a, the wand here that would dip inside. Um, so when he pressed uh, this button uh, over here, his setup, uh, he pressed this push button, uh, it caused the micro bit that would be attached to this, uh, this breakout board over here uh, and, and do all the mechanics. Uh, let's see it in action. Uh, there'll be another part where it shows you the whole thing uh, with the bubbles being blown. So yeah, the micro bit is inserted into this particular board, which is, uh, allows the micro bit to go up like that. And there's a moto uh, that will spin and a servo that will move when the code tells it to, right? When you press the button, it's like uh, every what, one second or two seconds, it will cause those two things to happen. The, 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 the servo will, uh, I mean, the, the, the motor will basically run. This is actually just a, a DC motor that's connected to a little fan. And that thing runs, you know, spins around uh, at the same time, causing the servo, uh, and the other uh, motor, uh, oh. the servo to move from one position to the other so that it can dip and get the thing, the, the soap solution and come up to uh, the, the windy uh, part, which is where the, the fan is blowing. And then you got your bubble machine. So you can see a project like this and you can think, oh, I can do something like that. I've got a micro bit, I've got uh, my uh, motor, or I need to just get a little motor here. Um, and for example, with, with the octopus part that we were talking about, uh, you can even, you know, you can buy those things like the motor with a fan and you know, you have the fan uh, piece there and you can just attach it. Uh, you can just do it yourself as well. You can just uh, figure it out, um, you know, uh, you may not, uh, want to buy exact part, you know, uh, and you can just, you know, figure out how to make your own uh, kind of little fan that can attach to the motor as well. Uh, you know, the choice is yours, really. And it's, it's, it's great that there are all these little things that uh, these resources that you can find and, 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 and say, okay, I can do something like this. It may not be the exact same thing, but, uh, you know, uh, you can understand all you need to know is, you know, how to do the coding and, and stuff like that. It's real easy. Um, uh, just use the code blocks, uh, and the micro bit can interface with you know other kinds of breakout boards like that. Yeah. So that's it for um sort of like this is sort of a research uh, portion. Uh, you know, like how you can find out more about these things. Um, I think we also wanted to just show you. Um, maybe we want to show you like on the book pages. Uh, all these things uh, because there are more there are more things about motors that we talked about in the book um yeah well maybe i should bring it up uh, i do have the book yeah yeah so um here's the part on the step oh uh, well actually i should just maybe go on to just quickly say that uh, that's the other part which is the uh, dc motor like if you're just using it for let's say making uh car you know something with wheels move um you know we have a, a there are breakout boards that specifically are uh, used to um uh, uh, be able to control uh more high powered motors like the dc motors uh and it's just a matter of connections you know just uh knowing okay you just connect this wire to this part uh and for, let's say you need a battery pack to connect uh, uh to this part of the of the breakout board because this breakout board is special, it has a motor driver built into it, and um, it needs to run off another battery source, another power source, okay? Um, the micro bit itself that's connected over here, uh, does, uh, uh, it will not be able to power uh, these motors, so that's why you have this particular breakout board. Uh, but in this way, uh, you get um, more powerful motors being able to, to, to be used in, uh, and in this project, you know, it is to make a cardboard car or basically make uh, this car move uh, using the two motors like 
Yeah. So there are um um it, it's it, again you then you would might need to use the pins, the digital uh using the pins in the break up in the in the code drawer um uh, to, to move them independently. Um you know, or you could choose to use the the extensions that we we're talking about. Um but it's it's basically connecting it, you know, is it, pretty straightforward, uh, just knowing that. And then you know, here's here's the code, right? You saw the button A press or on button B press. What do you do? Um, you know, these are from your uh, the, the car uh, several uh, blocks, right? Uh, the green ones here. Yeah, just move forward or break. Yeah. And um, the other project that we actually had, we talked about stepper motors. Um, and stepper motors. Uh, basically, in this case, uh, are being used in the uh, Sunbrella project, yeah. which is basically, oh, let me show you a better picture over here. That's the yeah. real thing. Oh, ah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and this was the thing that dropped just now. So basically, um, this is the Sunbrella, um, the stepper motor, and we attach uh, like an umbrella to it, and you it will move it will move left and right according to the sun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean yeah, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean this this um uh, so all these motors, these motor projects is just okay, just know how to, you know how to put this pin to this place or how to uh connect this uh up. And then the code itself is, is pretty straightforward, like it in, you know, it's similar to what we just showed you in the continuous servo. Uh, you just need to get the package and just tell it to move exactly which way. Um, the stepper moto is a bit, uh, it's slightly more, um, uh, at, uh, more complex, slightly, uh, because um, you can see that you need a code. Whoops, I should be showing. Uh, yeah. Um, let's just do this. Uh, you should be actually showing a um, uh, uh, on start, right? You need to actually set your moto uh, to uh, be at these particular pins, uh, and then uh, you can use another uh, in your forever block. You can forever uh, be getting it to to move, uh, you know, uh, in a certain way. Um, so these blue blocks, these dark blue blocks, are from um, another package. Uh, let's go to make code and show you or let me go to extensions like this um and if i type in for stepper for the stepper motor uh there's this one here stepper motor extension and uh this particular package is specifically for your stepper motor right there yeah so there it is that was that uh, on start, you needed to put this in so that uh, you know where the pins are connected to. Uh, and then you can move it one way anti-clockwise or clockwise and how many steps you want to do it and get it to stop. Yeah. So the the magic is all inside the package, right? Yeah. And uh, if you need to understand it more, um, you know, all these uh, have help. If you right click on the blocks, uh, you can open up the help. Um, and there should be some documentation to you know explain a bit more. Uh, this one may be a bit more uh, not as easy to read, um, but you know it depends on you know who makes the packages and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but sometimes it's also quite straightforward just by reading it like this. Yeah, you can understand what's going on. Yeah, like in the continuous servo, even if I just put um my mouse over here, uh, I should get. A help. I can help. Me. Oh, let me in servo. Right. Let's say I put servo over here. There. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For for this particular package, uh, yeah, you can see continuous servo. What do you tell you? Hmm. Yeah. It depends on, it on whether they. Yeah. <laughs> they added it in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it depends. So it, 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 uh, I guess if you do go out for help, then yeah. So it, sometimes, it, yeah, sometimes 
it is a bit of a hidden, um, you know, depending on how well the documentation has been supported for those batches. Uh, but do go and try out, you know, uh, where possible, try out looking for help and and start trying to use documentation to figure out and understand these things. Um, yeah, it's a great way to to expand your knowledge as well. Yeah. So, um, did we have anything else uh, wanted to go that's... on about? No, I think it's almost time mm. too. Maybe if mm. uh, let me check the chat box. Oh, any questions, anyone? Feel free to ask us. Oh, I see. Leslie was saying something about the. Uh, making a youtube video yes i think he's referring to the zoe trope one hmm. uh, yeah. although we do have a speed making right uh of the zoe trope um we, we? Uh, yeah i mean building like i uh, building the zoe trope when we did the, the book launch um do you oh, want to actually yes, see that yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I can actually just play that right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is on our in our YouTube channel as well. But okay, let me just play this. So this is us making the zoetrope from the from the book, uh, from the book, the steps from the book actually. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna play it now. There's good reason why chapter nine is one of our longest chapters, as we want to break down the myriad of options we have, incorporating motos to move things in our microbit projects. So that's how we decided to explore the DC moto, continuous servo moto, and the stepper moto to understand the different suitability for different types of projects. You'll find that a major consideration to take note of is providing enough power to the moto, to which is why we show you how to use the moto bit breakout board for the DC moto or the ULN 2003 driver board for the stepper moto, which ensures enough power gets supplied. Since these two model types require more components and a few more connections, let's see how to use the more convenient continuous servo motor that's featured in our spinning Zotro project. Recall that um, the Let's Get Hacking site, we actually have that. Um, uh, well, we have a version of it, but the, uh, if I go and search for Zoe Trope, we have a, um, uh, a Christmas themed um, um, Ken Snowman Leaping uh, Zoe Trope. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is what we were talking about. Uh, Heidi was talking about the Let's Get Hacking site, and uh, we show you the step by step, you know, how to make it. Uh, and uh, go through uh, uh, the whole process 
and then the coding is what we showed just now. And yeah, uh, so this is how you can also um, um, look up the projects as well. Mm. Yes, um, looks like we don't have any questions. Uh, okay, uh, shall we move on to the last uh, to the survey? Yes, um, so um, uh, there's a QR code to a NLB Make It survey. Uh, if you have any feedback, good or bad, uh, do give uh, give us a feedback. Um, or you can, or if you have any other questions, like after this, uh, do uh, DM us. Like uh, we will definitely reply you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just leave this uh, on screen. And uh, of course, our website and uh, email and all our social. On Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, we blog on Medium as well. Uh, we blog a, uh, we have a blog on on like projects that we do with interns that we have and and uh, new things in the company uh, and, and also stuff on uh, LinkedIn and GitHub as well. Yep. That's, uh, so that's that. And yeah, and we give uh, feedback um uh, via the QR code. Uh, the, Feedback, the NLB uh, feedback yeah, for their programs. Okay. Um, should we end this live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have, what, three minutes, technically? Um, if anyone has anything that they want to ask, uh, uh, go, go ahead. We have three, yeah, we have like four, four minutes, four, five minutes. Mm. Lil Boat, Bolt Brawl Star says, thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you can talk to us about anything, actually. Like, not yes. just microbes, but like other stuff. Like, I don't know, uh, what else? Arduino, iOS. I mean, it's not related to this life, but yeah, feel free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we've been involved in all sorts of projects. Just that microbit is uh, quite, quite a bit of stuff is going on with microbit. And it, yeah, I mean, it's easy enough to understand and pick up. So there's a wide range of people who can get into it but there's always the other kinds of platforms for you know more specific projects or more powerful projects you need um yeah you can always uh, ask us as well about those things to see what we can help out with Yeah, okay. so um yeah, uh there'll be a we, we will save this live. Uh you can watch it anytime. Um so yeah, thank you. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye bye.